Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. I've been saying for a while on my community page that I wanted to just kind of ride off into the sunset in A1A with my windows down, kind of enjoy it, and just kind of get some nice relaxing views. It, A1A is absolutely beautiful. Riding from the top of Florida to the bottom, especially if you're riding during the right season, right time with your windows open, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And I wanted to kind of enjoy that. I'm going to be taking a friend with me and we're going to be spending some time in the St. Augustine area and also the Jacksonville area. I may do a meetup while we're there and I think it could be fun. Um, I've to be honest with you, I've kind of had it with the cold up here. <laughs> so today's t video topic is going to be OCCT, Linus and Piracy, part two. So this says Linus Tech Tips pirating from OCCT, answer from the developer. The TLDR, Linus Tech Tips uses OCCT in their videos. It's a stress testing software and they didn't pay for a pro license, which raised controversy. And you can see that he is using this piece of software here without a pro license. So again, what I'd like to do here is just kind of discuss how this type of thing can happen at a business, the numerous different ways it can happen. I'm not really gonna be giving much of my opinion on Linus or the developer of the software. I just kind of want to give a little bit of backstory as to how these things can happen. Because I have had this experience at my business and I maybe this will also help people who are business owners prevent this from happening and also kind of understand what to do if they see something like this happening at their business. So the first thing I wanna do is read the post before I get into it from my point of view. So it says, my original answer, OCCT dev here. I read the whole comment thread. Wow, that blew up and felt like I had to give my personal view of this. Let me draw the whole picture quickly. I'm the sole developer behind the project and I've always been a solo developer and it's currently downloaded 20,000 times a day. I made that my main job due to COVID events since early 2021 and currently I'm not making ends meet with the project and if things continue that way, I'll have to put OCCT as a side job again despite its huge success. OCCT has been around for 18 years now and has been free for personal use only for like 10 plus years at least. It's not new, it's forbidden for professional slash commercial use. Don't ask me when exactly, but it's been about 10 plus years at least. I think it was since OCCT 2.0. I'll say how I feel about this without filtering anything. First reaction was, oh my effing God, I am finally featured on a popular YouTube channel. I was on Jay-Z's channel already, he used a very old version, and now on Linus Tech Tips. I was thoroughly really happy. Then after a few minutes, it starts to hit you. Did they contact you? No. Did they pay for a license? No. Are they out of bounds? Yeah. Now, should I care about that? That's the tough part. They have tremendous power. They make a video saying OCCT sucks. I'm dead. No matter how 18 years of being useful are, uh, I'm as good as dead. They can pronounce a death sentence instantly. Gamers Nexus, Jay-Z, and a lot of others can. Uh, and now, this is just... In my opinion, I, I don't believe that's the case. I understand why he believes that's the case. I understand why he's anxious because he is a software developer, maybe not the most socially comfortable software developer, maybe not the most popular, but at the end of the day, I do believe that the audiences of tech channels do have critical audiences. So for instance, if I say the Atten 858 sucks because if you have an A1286 board, you could heat up the ISL 6259 for 10 minutes and it literally will not come off of the board unless you have a preheater. I don't think you should need a preheater with the hot air station on this board. This is why I dislike it. People may try that and go, okay, I agree with Lewis. But if I simply say, this thing sucks, and I don't tell you why, and uh, millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people have used it, and they've had a good experience, I'm going to get a lot of pushback on that. And the fact that I'm popular is actually going to work against me, because it means more people are going to hear my take, which is a really bad take, and then they are going to have more and more, more people speak out against that particular bad take. So if I was to say something like the HackO FX 951 is horrible because it doesn't allow the iron to heat up enough to be able to actually remove a resistor, I don't think any I don't, I don't think Hacker would have to worry about lack of sales of that because tens of thousands of people are going to go, "Wait a second. I use a Hacker 951 and it heats up things just fine. What is that idiot talking about?" And it actually backfire against me. When it comes to tech savvy audiences, I do think that they are pretty critical of the content creators and that they are open to correcting them when they say stupid shit. So if you spent 18 years doing something good, not only would somebody calling you out when they have no reason to call you out actually um, not hurt you, but that could actually be a good thing for you. But that's separate. I just want that to kind of be understood there because I think that the power dynamic between, you know, people with over a million subscribers and people that just, you know, develop software that don't have popular YouTube or Twitter channels, it should be understood that you got a little bit more leverage than you think you do. But moving on. Would I have offered them a free license with an email? Hell yes. Why wouldn't I? I mean, it's free ad for OCCT, and it can only benefit us both. 
So in the end, it was just boiling down and not being nice. I let the matter be as I enjoyed plus 15% visits for a few days following this and tried to forget about it. Then he talks about emailing other YouTube channels. He said, I got a response from Gamers Nexus, which led to nowhere. I was still happy getting answered though, thanks, and none from the others. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a special snowflake. I don't deserve answers. They are so big they can view me as an insect easily, we just don't compare. But then you realize the sole one that replied to you was the one that wasn't using your work to make some of their content. I don't know if they use OCCT regularly, I just know that they did for sure, but still, it was a bitter taste. So here I was, having no attention from major YouTube channels dedicated to hardware slash review, despite them using my work, and seeing them advertise CTR like crazy while the dev of CTR was being rude to his own community. Crash Team Racing? It also boils down to this. I'm not a marketer. I'm not a YouTuber. My videos are crappy. I'm not an entertainer. I'm a developer. People are so used to having OCCT around that they forget that there's someone working behind it. I mean, 80% of my traffic comes from people Googling OCCT, so it's a tad known. It's been a lingering feeling. I read the Twitter stuff about ad blocking being piracy. Well, it's even more blatant in my case. I am down 10k of euros of personal funds since I switched full-time on OCCT since I need more money to support my family and we are living crazy. I have three kids, my wife's working part-time, minimum wage, so well. I feel like answering their ad block is piracy tweet. It's like a company complaining about not making even more money when I can't make ends meet and it felt unfair. Especially since they publicly pirated OCCT. I'm not sure you can say that since I would have given them a free license on the spot, to be honest. I did not, being afraid of the consequences, I'm better off shutting my big mouth and trying to increase slowly my income to support my family rather than starting fires here and there and put my starting business at a jeopardy. Here's the whole picture, the situation. Not letting OCCT drop. I'm working on OCCT version 11 like crazy. I'm like 60 hours a week on it, hoping it'll be the version that makes me not worry about money anymore. And that's a dream, being able to afford buying test hardware rather than constantly bug people I find here and there to let me access their computer to debug. Am I mad? No. It's just a lingering feeling of unfairness. And while you're experiencing it, you're always wondering if it's justified or not. If you're just being a special snowflake or a princess to whom everything is due, it's a complex feeling. I'll try to make it simple for you. You're mad, but you're, it's okay to be mad. You don't, you don't have to feel ashamed for being mad. And you don't have to, and at the end of the day, if you have to think about whether or not your feeling is valid, it probably is valid. And I think you should give a shit less what other people think of you and more what you think of yourself. When you look in the mirror, can you live with yourself? If you can live with yourself, then fuck everybody else. But that's just my personal advice. The, the times are to entertainers, not engineers. That's a fact. As a closing note, most companies are like that. And he talks about some other companies. And uh, that's it. So uh, the first, what I wanted to do with this video is just kind of explain how it is that something like this can happen. I want to be very clear with this. I'm not excusing a company that is using software for commercial use when using a free or personal license. I'm not saying that that's okay. I'm not trying to defend it. I'm simply trying to explain where this is coming from because if you understand where it's coming from, then you may feel less intimidated getting into a confrontation. What I get from this guy and all the posts that I see is that he doesn't like confrontation, he avoids confrontation, and he questions whether or not it's even a good idea to have these types of confrontations. I'm a more confrontational person now than I was as a teenager. I've kind of learned to embrace confrontation. And hell, a lot of this YouTube channel, some of the best videos on here are based on confrontation, whether it is with lying realtors, with Apple when they asked me to take my videos down, reseller ratings back in 2012, or whatever it is. Sometimes confrontation is a good thing. It is a natural and good thing to become angry, in my opinion, a lot of the time. When you have a germ or a virus that enters your body, your white blood cells are on it. And when somebody attacks your dignity, your anger gets on it. Anger is a natural response to someone screwing with your human dignity. To be clear, I am not trying to let Linus off of the hook for using a free or personal license for commercial use. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm simply looking to explain why this happens so that you may understand that there are many other ways this can happen that are not malicious. And this is going to be based on experience that I've had at my own company. So a couple of different ways that this can happen is if you have an employee that is looking to solve a problem and that employee does not have access to the company credit card. So there may be somebody who's just trying to solve a problem really quick. It, this doesn't affect their personal money at all. And maybe the manager is busy right now and he just doesn't feel like waiting in his troubleshooting process to try and fix whatever problem it is to ask him. So he just downloads the free version of the software and uses it. Or it could be the case that maybe somebody is, they know we're not making money off of this particular thing that's being done. And since they know we're not making any money off of it, this is just being done as a courtesy. I, we're never going to use this again. I'm not going to pay $2,000 for this license. I'll just use a free license and just use it this once and that be that. I'm not saying that this is the right thing to do. 
I'm not saying it's right, but stuff like this can happen and you may not notice as a manager. And there are times where I've not noticed as a manager. There are people that work here that remember what it was like when I was working out of a basement that was filled with weed smoke that had no light, where I was subleasing from somebody else because again, I had no money and I had no ability to like honestly pay rent on a real location, much less pay thousands of dollars for commercial licenses for software. And if somebody who's been with the company that long uh, you know, I could understand how maybe they would have the idea that they'd be stuck in that culture that maybe I should try to save as much money for my boss as possible. But it's important for them to understand once we're at the point of having 12 employees, of having a store location in Midtown Manhattan, of being known around the world, that paying a couple of hundred dollars for a software license to do a repair really doesn't matter anymore and that they should just effing pay for it. And it was important to have that conversation with them. But it was also important while having that conversation to understand that if one of them didn't, that it wasn't because they were trying to be mean. It was because they remember where this company started. They remember how broke it was. And they still kind of have that mindset lingering. Those employees may still have that deprivation or poverty mindset about the company lingering, even though our circumstances have clearly changed. There are numerous examples of people that become worth 10 or 20 or 50 million million dollars that still act like they're going to lose it all or they're afraid of losing it all because they started out broke or they came from a broke family and they still they, they're just not able to allow their new reality to adjust to what's in their head yeah there's a book the mind body code with mario martinez where he talks about that it's a pretty good book where he talks about how people are often not able to adjust to their new circumstances and they still believe that they're in their old one there was one time where i was walking by and i saw a piece of software on somebody's computer about four or five years ago and it was something that i figured had a commercial license and i don't remember paying for it and i know that the particular person that was using it did not have access to the company credit card he was not a manager so i inspected it and i noticed oh that's the free version so I had a meeting of everybody at the store, and I said, if any of you are using software that is cracked, that is a free version or a personal version when there's a commercial version available, I'm not mad at you right now because we've never had this talk before. Let's set the company culture right now. This company is well known. We are no longer at the point where I have $200 in the bank and $1,000 in credit card debt, where something like this could be at least even in some way justified by saying you're broke, so you had a pirate or whatever, which I don't agree with, but still, this must stop. Now, I'm not mad at any of you because we haven't had the discussion yet. Here is the company card. Please purchase commercial versions of anything and everything that you are using or have used. Buy the commercial version even if we're not using it anymore. Now, I'm not mad at you. But if into the future this happens again, or I see that there's a piece of software that you didn't pay for, then I will actually be mad at you. And the reason that you have to phrase it like that, the reason you can't write people up for doing this or get the employee in trouble for doing that, is kind of like what Mr. Clinton the cat does. Every now and then Mr. Clinton the cat will jump up here while I'm doing a video, and then he will bite my hand, or he'll bite my finger, or he'll bite my arm. This is intended as a love bite. You can tell that Mr. Clinton means it as a love bite. The thing is, he digs in really, really hard, and it is painful. So if I would have smacked him in the head, he would become really salty. He'd think, I was showing you that I love you, and in response to me showing you that I love you, you hit me. Why? And then he'd probably start scratching up my speakers, pissing outside the litter box, and getting back at me. And the same can happen with an employee. Now, my employees are always looking for ways to save me money. When the Department of Consumer Affairs comes in and tries to screw me over because something's not on a receipt, they will edit the receipt in real time as they are printing it to have what it is that they missed out on so that I don't get fined $250. They will actually put in extra effort to save me money because they are good people, because we care about each other, and because they care about the company. I can't punish them for doing something, even if it was misguided or wrong or potentially illegal, if they were tra if it started, it stems from that thought of, I want to save my boss money. I can reprimand them for it and say, this is wrong, don't do that, but to actually write them up or cut their pay or punish them in some way, you have to figure out wh where they're coming from with it. And if it's coming from a good place of, I just wanted to save you something, you tell them, listen, that's wrong. I'm not mad at you right now, but I will be mad at you if you keep doing it by the software. And that, that's how we've handled that in the past. But it is very possible that there could be somebody who is misguided, who's thinking, I'm going to try to save the company money that made the executive decision without asking the boss. And that, again, it's, it's screwed up, 
but it does happen. And it could result in somebody like Linus not actually being aware that this was the case while he's doing the video. And when you consider a channel like Linus's where he has other people doing the script writing and other people doing the recording and other people doing the editing, it's not uh, a stretch to imagine that he may have not even actually known that his employees went out of their way to utilize a personal license rather than a commercial license on that piece of software. Again, I can't say exactly what happened, but stuff like that, uh, it is possible for that to happen. And the other is where somebody who is making that decision may not actually be somebody who has access to a credit card or the person who has access to the credit card is away right now. So they just figure we're just going to do this quickly and then forget about it. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it should happen, but these are ways that this can happen where you don't actually notice. And the only way that you are actually going to figure out what it is that's going on is when you actually see the employee in the act of using something that is either a free license or a crack piece of software based on some basic micromanagement or just looking around at the desk and seeing what's on his laptop, which admittedly, I don't do very often. I don't micromanage my staff. I don't look at every single thing that they're doing at every single moment. So it was purely by chance that I caught that. But what's important to do when you do catch that is have the conversation with them and say, I'm not mad at you for what you did. And if you wind up behind on your queue because you're wasting an hour or two combing through to figure out what pieces of software you used, I'm not going to be mad at you for being behind in your queue, but you got to do this right now. And, um, and you go from there. Now, I don't know what the case was in here. I, I, I really don't know what it was that was going on at the company. I don't know if it was a case of the people that were setting up that computer just hit download for free and they just didn't have access to a credit card or Linus wasn't there at the moment or whoever gets to approve this type of purchases or something like that wasn't there. So they just figured, well, we have to get this set up and we're in a rush. So they just download it. Nobody noticed. Maybe that happened. Or maybe they thought 250 a year, screw that. I sincerely doubt that it, they looked and said 250 a year, screw that. Linus was paying for a proper team viewer license, which they, A, team viewer sucks balls and OC OCTD doesn't. And B, that costs way more money than this. Linus does not strike me as a person that at his point in the game is going to try to shave $250 a year off of his expenses by screwing over the little guy. Like that, that you know, for many of the criticisms that somebody may lay on Linus, I really don't see that as... Um, I, d I just don't see him thinking that. I don't see that as his thought process. And it's most likely one of these clerical things like that, or maybe an underling that just thought, I'm in a misguided way, I'm going to save the company money. Now, at the end of the day, Linus is the owner of the company. Linus is the person who directs the company. And the responsibility and accountability is on him to make that right. And at the end of the day, you are responsible for what your staff does. I am responsible for what people here do. I have to, fr I have frequently in the past had to apologize for things that I did not do wrong because I hired the person that did the thing wrong. So I'm not absolving him of responsibility. I'm simply trying to explain the way it is because I think that there are a lot of people out there that may be afraid. What if he tries to destroy me? I think that's coming from the idea that they're assuming that maybe he was doing it maliciously when it was actually just a mistake. If you assume that somebody's doing something to you out of malice, rather than out of just somebody did something stupid, you may assume that they're going to react to you much worse than they actually react to you. And if you make that assumption, it may make you less likely to engage in a confrontation, which is necessary. And I do believe this is a necessary confrontation. If you have software that you produce that has a license for commercial or personal use, and you have somebody that is, let's be honest here, has a YouTube channel over 10 million subscribers, many millions of dollars that is doing this, that's kind of, if you're not going to make the confrontation there, then when will you? If Bill Gates uses your software without a license, like you have to have that confrontation, if not just for your own human dignity, so that you can at least clarify and understand what is going on to get rid of your resentment. If you realize that somebody just clicked that and they totally forgot about it and they were supposed to ask somebody to pay for it and they never did because they were busy setting up LTX or something, if that's the case, then at least then maybe you will be less resentful because you will not see it as them doing something malicious to you. Even outside of the money aspect of it or anything else, harboring that resentment, harboring, keeping that anger inside of you long term is bad. I don't think it's bad to have anger in the short term in order to defend your personal dignity. But I do think that anger turning into a longer term resentment because you never address the conflict that you need to address, that is really, really bad for you. And it really will eat away at you. 
So if he noticed this in 2021, and he's only now starting to mention this publicly in 2022, that's a long time for that anger to turn into resentment and to fester, and it does fuck with you. It does screw with your brain. It does screw with your thought process. It does mess with your happiness, and it can mess with your attitude. So I think it's really important to just kind of be a little pragmatic as to why something is happening. Because in the past, there are many times where I assumed the worst possible interpretation or the worst possible intent on somebody else's part, when in reality, it was something else altogether. And I really wish that I had just kind of tried to work things out early on rather than harbor that resentment within me for, you know, a month or three months or six months or a year, when in reality, it really just was somebody did something stupid and somebody else didn't even really notice that they did something stupid. Now, we know that he knew about this for a long time, and as he mentioned in his post, because there's a tweet here from May of 2021 where the developer says, thanks for using the software in your videos. Uh, it's pretty old. The app got much better since then. Give it a shot. That's a, uh, that, it's been almost a year, which means that he's probably had this resentment for almost a year. Resentment that could have been solved if you just got angry immediately. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with feeling angry immediately. You don't have to respond in a way where you are angry, but if you let that anger flow through you, it will then allow you to say, hey, I appreciate that you use my software, did you make money off of that video because we have a commercial license for it if you're using it for commercial purposes? Just saying, let me know, and then go from there. And then you would have figured out, oh, my bad, I didn't know about that, I'm sorry, here you go. And then it would have saved a year of resentment. I really do believe that resentment destroys your soul, is not good for your health, and just really screws with you. I have felt resentment in the past when I was not able to just have the conversations and the conflicts that I needed to because I was afraid to for whatever reason. And at the end of the day, the way that resentment eats away at you inside is worse than just about any of the consequences that would actually occur from having that conflict, from having that conversation and hashing everything out. It's just something that I think is worth mentioning. So just something to think about. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Obviously, I understand that since he went off on the tweet storm on how Adblock is piracy, how there are going to be more people that are going to come out and criticize him for instances of this, and they also may be a little bit more hostile in there in, in criticizing him for this, given that he made the argument about Adblock being piracy. So I can understand why some of the posts are as spicy as they are. But at the end of the day, I don't believe that this was done with malicious intent. Um, again, you have to take accountability and responsibility for it, but I, I really don't think that this was something where Linus is thinking, I'm gonna screw over that person and his family and his ability to work on software so that my company can save 250 bucks. That's just not the mindset of, uh, of someone once you get to this point in business. Maybe if somebody's working out of their apartment, I can understand how that could be their mindset. Maybe if you have one employee, maybe if your business is broke, but his business is far from that. I've been to his location. He has like over 30 employees. He has an entire building of people that are working on productions for him. He, you know, he has a warehouse. Like he, he's not at the point where it's like, I'm going to risk this reputationally for $250 because I really care about that 250 that much. I genuinely believe that when you just look at the risk versus reward of this action, that this was most certainly a mistake that was brought on by one of the things I described earlier in this video rather than him actually being malicious. But you let me know what you think. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. See you all in the next video. Bye now.